Good morning, finally got a decent warm day. I'm gonna to attempt to put these solar panels on. And I'm just fixing to get my, let's see, what am I got? 3M5200, I think it's called, some real good stuff. So I'm gonna, I've got these just, just screwed down at the moment. They're not bonded yet, so I'm gonna pull the screws out and I'll put that 3M fiberglass bonding stuff on there and screw them back down. So hopefully those will be good and sturdy and these big panels will stay on there and not come off. I didn't see any, well, I kind of made my own hinges, as you can see how they're made here. See little, I just used inch and a half square tubing, put a hinge in there. Put another piece down here, you can see how they, so that wagon hinge it from either side. You see how that side's pivoted up. And uh, eventually I'll make me some, some brackets here. It'll run down from here to here. I can just quickly fasten on there and keep them at a 45 degree angle or whatever I need it to be. So I'm just kind of winging it. First time I've installed solar panels, so we'll just see how it goes step by step and we'll get it figured out. All right, we're making some progress. You can see these I've already got got glued down or bonded with this stuff right here, 3M 5200. It's supposed to be really good stuff for fiberglass. And before you apply it, they tell you on the instructions, be sure to use acetone, not to use alcohol. Said alcohol can actually weaken the bond. So I got me some acetone and where's my little scrubby brush here? Yeah, I've been using this thing right here, giving it a nice clean spot. And I sand that off a little bit, and I'm fixing to, fixing to bond these on there. And if you notice, I got these set up so they tilt a little bit. Um, see on this side, so I got just only one block, and then the hinge goes right into the frame of, of the solar panel. But on the other side, I've got a block of aluminum attached to the solar panel, along with a block of aluminum down here in my hinge, which makes my connection and I can, can make it pivot. Uh, so that way it gives me a little bit of a lean so when it rains the water will wash off to one side. Hopefully uh, keep it a little, a, little, a little bit cleaner. And also by doing that I was able to clear my vent pipe by, stack, by stacking it up that way so even the panel just goes right over top of it and clears it well. So uh, we're going to glue a few more of these down and let it dry and see how it does. Okay, they're all put down, bonded, just wait for them to dry. And now I gotta work on my combiner box, running my wires. One thing I was wanting to point out, I learned this last year when I went to take the refrigerator out. This is a 2005, 2005 Winnebago Voyage. And last year I went to take the refrigerator out and it just wouldn't come out. I pulled and tugged and played with it. And I finally got on the roof and pulled the, the vent. And what I found from the factory, even before they put the vent on, they put two screws, there they are, those two Phillips screws. They put those two Phillips screws along with that extra bracket to brace that refrigerator a little bit better, I guess. And of course they did that, then they put the vent on. Of course you can see here why I cut the screen and then sealed it back. Um, but that's how, how they did it. If you ever need to pull your refrigerator out, look for those screws up here, then it'll come out much easier. And uh, I think I'm gonna loosen that up and See about running my wires down through here and get things down to my charge controller and see if we can't start making some free juice. Now I'm inside and I just run my wires down from the roof vent. It's kind of dark, but there's the roof vent right there. And there's my wires coming down, kind of strapped in so they stay away from the, the heat of the refrigerator coils. I'm going down into my compartment where my charge controller is and got my wires run for my Bogart on the other side get around here got that going on looks good back of my nor cold refrigerator there's my fans I put on there to help make it a little bit more efficient and then here's the switch I use to kick them on with and so I got the red light lights up for me so I know not to leave it on. So I'm going to pop the refrigerator back in there and keep trucking. Oh yeah, P.S. Earlier I was talking about that bracket. 
There's that bracket. When you get Bego, adds that bracket and runs those screws into the refrigerator. So if you take all the screws out of the front, because in the front there's like two screws up top, two screws in the bottom. So there's only four screws that hold the refrigerator in besides the big mounting screws here in the back. It takes a 9 socket. Uh, you got two of those. But uh, Winnebago goes a step further and puts you some screws up here at top, of course. It takes a while to figure that out sometimes. have to take the roof, roof vent off to, to get them loose and get the fridge out. Here's another tip about getting your refrigerator in and out. Is we happen to have these little stools. These little brown stools and they're just the right height. So I stick the stool out there in front and I just slide the refrigerator out and slide it right on top of the stool. It's just exactly the right height to, to get that in and out with. And there's what the stool, another one looks like. So pick those up at Walmart. Great for storage and, and great for getting your fridge out of that hole. All right, it's nighttime now. And I just wanted to show a little bit here before I put my covers on everything and wrap this compartment up of what I did to, to get it in here. This being on my Winnebago 38J, this was my little water compartment and I had to kind of remove, uh, do a lot of changing to get it to work because the water pump was in the, in the floor. And I moved the water pump up here on the back side. You can see it right there. And my lever that was my you know, dump valve for the fresh water tank was on the side. So I removed it from the side panel, moved it to the, to the ceiling here. And same way with my little bracket there for the dirt normal operation divert. I had to move it a little bit different position to uh, make some, uh, me enough space and I you can see my Xantrex 1000 watt inverter. I had to move it back a little bit farther out of the way. Uh, this here is my engine starting battery and I know the manual Morningstar don't want you to have the charge controller in the same compartment with the battery but I kind of had to do it anyway, but I did make me this little box and, and hose that comes out here to the to the outside to vent it to that atmosphere. And whenever my battery goes dead, the engine starting battery, I'll replace it with a sealed battery. So uh, I'll hopefully take care of that. And I see yeah, I'll move my light. It was down low. I moved it up high and did a few things. So, and I still got some room here if, if I ever needed to add any more batteries or anything. But I was wanting to show a little bit how I got my wires and you can see my wires coming down the, the back there the um, black and green wire that's coming down behind the fridge from the from the roof of the RV got those coming down you see them going into the bottom of the charge controller and um, you see my of course this, there's the ground from the um, from the roof and this is the ground here going over to the uh, the, the battery negative on the my battery bank. This is my wire going to my battery bank, leaving the charger. And then this is the wire here coming into the solar charger from the the solar panels on the roof. And right next here you can see my, my, my breakers I put in. And I got them labeled also. And in the current flow. What's coming in it? Coming in at the bottom we got got the the battery coming in, going through a breaker, going to the charge controller, then the black wire that is coming from the roof, the the positive side of, of my panels, the, the three panels that I got hooked up in parallel, going through my breaker, leaving the breaker, going back down and into the yellow terminal on the charge controller. So that's how I did that, and it is working well. Uh, Seem to keep on because I'm running off the batteries right now. Then finally got unplugged from the house. I don't have to have a cord stretched across the um, porch no more. I'm going to lie on this. And so I'll put my screws on all this stuff and finish wrapping it up. <clears throat> this is just a little PS. Uh, what a disaster I've made of my poor RV or my, my wife's poor RV. She, she just flips out when she sees this. She <laughs> I tell her it, I'll eventually get it cleaned up. But uh, a project like this really does get involved. A lot of tools, taking stuff apart, and moving things around. But it's been fun. It's been a job. But, but um, I'm on the way to recovery, getting it all back together. 
seen the Bogart up there matted. I pulled the fridge out so I can get all my wires and all that stuff in there. So I still got some more work and a lot of cleanup to do. But anyway, if you tackle this project, get ready for a mess. Because I sure got one. Alright, I got everything all working down. I want to show you how I end up coming up with my own little pivoting, mounting feet, hinges, whatever you want to call them to support these big panels. Because each panel weighs about oh, close to 50 pounds each. And I wanted something good and strong. So I kind of just made up my own little system. And what I did, I just took a, a simple little hinge, knocked out the pin. And I got me a piece of wire here. You can see how I put me a little screw here so it makes like a little lock so it can't come out while I'm going down the road. So when I get somewhere and I want to pivot my panels, I just pull this pin on this one. Go up here. Same way, I got the lock. Unlock it. Pull the pin. And now I haven't got my adjustable uh, holders yet. This thing here. I'll, I'll do that eventually. Um, get this lifted up. It's hard to do one hand. Let me see. Here we go. Let's lift it up. Little prop rod under there. So you see how that works. Works out real well. Seems to be good and strong. But uh, eventually I'll get me some sort of adjust adjustable rod here that's got a bunch of different holes in it or something other so I can change angles of the sun. But you can see how like on the back side I got it it works on, on both sides. This is inch and a half square tubing. I think I got twenty dollars in tubing, I don't know, ten dollars worth of hinges. And I made my own. And the way I put them on the RV as I drilled me like a half inch hole enough to drop me a self tapping screw into uh, and then a small hole below that where the screw would go through. I gotta get me some die core and, and uh, put over top of those screw heads. Haven't done that yet. Uh, but that's it. Now I used that uh, 3M 5200. It seems to be on there really well. Hope it stays put. And you can see my um, combiner box. Of course, we've got wires coming from the panels or 10 gauge. Got it in my combiner box, the homemade combiner box, and coming out with a number four gauge, which drops down the refrigerant vent right down to the charge controller. And everything seems to be working out pretty well on this system. Let's go up front, take another pan. So that's how I got it all working on my 38J. So, uh, I guess that's it for now.